everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back Trick Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how I make um, this weave of chainmail. I say it like that because there's so many different names and ways of describing this chainmail but it's basically, if you google it, um, Japanese foreign one oriental four-in-one uh four-in-one ring mail there's a lot of different ways to there's many different names for this as there are people to make it as with most as with most things chain mail um but it's a it's a different style of weave from the more traditional european four-in-one kind of some of the rings are going this way and some of the rings are going this way in the oriental or japanese or ring mail styles some of the rings are horizontal and some of the rings are vertical so they're they're moving completely perpendicular of each other and with this one each one ring has at least four others in it if not eight which is what we're doing here because the kind of ver <clears throat> excuse me the vertical rings are doubled up so let's get y'all a close-up view of this and get weaving so here we have our two different ring sizes. We have an 18 gauge 3 16 stretchy rubber, it's EPDM, EPDM, yeah, um, rubber rings from theringlord.com. And here we have a 16 gauge quarter inch um, anodized aluminum from the Ring Lord. Uh, and this is kind of, this size will work out, but you can go bigger with this ring and smaller with this ring and just as many different combinations as you feel like trying with uh, inner diameters and gauge thicknesses and just kind of see which one you prefer and what you end up having your favorite results with. So the technique will be the same regardless. So we're going to come through and we're going to open up a bunch of these rings. I'm just going to do a small sample swatch because you'll get the idea as it goes. And this is also why I've started doing two cameras um, is because sometimes you can see me better on this one and sometimes you can see me better on this one. So, and I think we'll just do a 4x4 four four because this will give you the idea of how to expand and how to start and how to finish um, all of your rows. And this is definitely a very nice and easy weave to do. Now also, let's see if I can't get this tilted up just a hair. Whenever you're opening a ring, if you come in and just open it like that, that's the proper way to open a ring. You don't ever want to take it and pull these ends apart from each other. And also, you only really need to come to like maybe a 45 to, oops, to 50 degree bend. You don't need to open it up to a full 90 degree uh, angle. That can actually sometimes make it a little harder on yourself than what it needs to be. Okay, I've got two more rings to open. And then to set up these rings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put four stretchy on the first one. And also, you don't have to do this with stretchy rings. You could just use closed rings. But I really like the stretch, especially for costuming purposes, because it just has a really nice drape and effect. Okay, so I have four on all of them, except for the last one, which will have two. And this is apl applicable whether you're doing a bracelet that's three or four rows wide, or if you're doing a costume top that's 20 or more rows wide. That's how many we're going to have on there. And again, this is for the four-in-one or the eight-in-one. If you were doing just one, like um, a four-in-one as opposed to an eight-in-one, you would just do two in each and then one on the last but I do recommend doubling up because um, especially with these smaller rings they can be a good bit more delicate um, and it's just a good idea really and it looks cool but again feel free to experiment also this is a big reason of why I like my bent nose pliers is they make it so easy to just pick rings up 
And on each consecutive row after this, we're going to repeat that pattern of four closed on each and every, except for one on uh, the last one, in which we'll have two. And I'm just going through and stacking them. A little bit more work here on the front end, I feel like, really gives us um, a faster weaving. And especially whenever you're first starting out, um, it's nice to not have to constantly stop one thing that you're doing to pick up another, you know, stop. And then on the last one, we're just going to do one set on each. So if you're doing four in one, that'd be one ring. If you're doing eight in one, that's two rings. And then none on the last. And that's applicable for both styles. Okay, so now we're going to pick up this first ring and close it. Now whenever you close your rings, you're going to want to push your pliers in towards each other just a little bit. And I do a little bit of this like wiggle to get them to kind of push towards each other. And the reason we're doing that is because whenever the ring is cut, um, a small amount, like I use a tenth, hundredth of an inch uh, thick saw blades whenever I cut my rings. Now, granted, I didn't cut these, but the ring lord's pretty comparable to what we do. Um, and so it takes away that very little bit that doesn't seem like much, but you could fit a fingernail or some hair or, you know, just something in between there. And so you really want that nice and butted together. Okay, so now you can see we have these four rings here. I'm going to splay them out like this because the four in one or the eight in, eight in one, um, this pattern has a little bit of a grid work effect. So you can see I have these two coming off to this side and those two coming off to that one. So I'm going to pick up the next ring in the row and I'm going to hook through just those two and I'm going to close it. And one of the keys to success here is going to consistently have those extra two rings hanging off towards the inside. So again, I'm just going to pick up these two because you don't want it, I'm going to show you what we don't want to do. You don't want it like this. Which right now that wouldn't be bad because you could just flip it over, but if you do a couple of rings and then start doing it on the other side, you're really going to make things complicated for yourself later on. So if we're holding it like this, you want them to both hang down the same way. I'm going to pick up the next string, hook through those two, and then close it. And I really like that click because it's just butted. Now this is a design, if you were doing it in solid metal, you could do it with split rings, which makes it very durable for, um, you know, armor purposes. Or you could use welded rings if you really want something a little bit more um, battle ready. But as, as usual in our tutorials, what we make is purely for costume purposes, maybe LARPing at the most, um, but not at all intended for live steel or live weapons in any way or form. So we're going to take this last ring that only had the two on it, and we're going to hook it through right there, just like that, and we're going to close it, just like that. And now you can see, I'm holding it by each end, you can see how it has those four sets of rings just hanging down like that. Like I said, if we had these rings on this side of the ring, that would be complicated. Um, so now I'm going to come back to our original ring, and I'm going to take one from the next row, and I'm going to hook it through from there, and I'm going to just close it. So now from this one, again, we have these four rings hanging loose. I'm going to pick up the next ring in the row, and I'm going to hook these two, and then I'm going to come back to this ring that has these two right there, and I'm going to hook through them, and I'm going to close it. So now if I hold on to it like this, you can see it's starting to form. We basically want those rows to just stay in line with each other. So I'm going to pick up the next ring, hook two, and then come up and hook one 
and 2 on the next string. There are a lot of different ways of going about doing this weave. Let me add another ring and we'll talk to you a little bit more about that. We're going to pick up this last one that only has the unit of 2 on there. Hook those two. And then we've got these two hanging loose. We'll hook those two. <laughs> now something that you could do if you prefer, if you're not working with stretchy rings, so you can see you can lay this out. And we have a row of four and a row of four. So you could come through and just weave lengths of like one two chain or two four chain. I don't know. Again, there's so many different names. I feel like it is much less important what something is called than the under like the priority should be the understanding of how the piece is woven and how it works and less of oh well this is called that. It's like well yeah, but I mean it's called like twenty other things too. <clears throat> I digress. So uh, we have, we could just make two rows of chain and then come through and join them together, you know, across in this direction. So it's however you prefer. So we're going to come in, we're going to do the third row now. We're going to hook one, two, three, four, two from one and then two from the other. And now you can see here an inkling into future Japanese weaves or oriental style weaves that we'll go through together where the ring would be offset kind of on the diagonal almost like a chessboard as opposed to a grid. I don't know if that makes any sense. Maybe honeycombs? I don't know. But instead of being in line this way In fact, I hooked that wrong. I was only supposed to hook one. If you were doing a different kind of Japanese weave, the six in one, you would hook it two like that on the first one. But we're not going to, so I'm going to stop myself while I'm ahead and undo this one. And then I'm going to close it. So you can see how that's just in line. I'm going to take the next ring in the row, hook two, and then come back to where these two are, and hook two. And close. I really hope this is making sense to y'all. It's the first time I've tried explaining the Japanese weave, um, so <laughs> I feel like I'm just saying the same like four words over and over again. But I'm going to hook these two from the ring we just added and then I'm gonna come around and hook those two. Whenever you're weaving you want to make sure that you're not like getting any interesting twists or anything going. You want all the rings to be nice and flat and on the same plane. And close. It's a really lovely strong wind today. And so I have another uh, last of my row with just the two, the unit of two on it. I'm gonna hook those two. And then I'm going to hook those two. And I'm going to hang it so you can see how it's going. Just like that. See how it hangs all uniformly? And so all of these little rings are all just going the same direction as each other and now this will be our last row and the way that the last row works is even if you're just doing a little square sample square like this or if you're doing a full sheet um, or a long bracelet you would come through and you would just hook on that bottom row and close and then you would come in with the next one, one open with two closed on it, hook through those two, and then travel back until you have a ring with some loose on it, and hook through right there, and close. And so this is one of the more simple chainmail weaves in that um, once you get the hang of that pattern, hooking those two, traveling back until you find 
too loose and hooking through them. Uh, once you get the hang of that, you've basically got it down and then it just becomes like an endurance thing. <laughs> so now we're doing our last ring. So we have this opened ring. I'm going to hook through those two and then I'm going to hook through those two. And I'm going to close it. And so now we could hang this square for a bracelet. We could have made it larger and had it fill in as a uh, hand flower on the back of the hand like that. Like put some chain around the finger and have it come down. Now for that though I would have experimented a little bit more with the shaping because you will want something to control these sides to keep them out straight because whenever it's up on a point it hangs really nicely so you could do some really pretty earrings I mean just the possibilities here are endless you're weaving your own fabric essentially so there we go hey everybody so thanks for hanging out with me for this tutorial. I hope that it was helpful to you. Um, but this little sample that we just did right here um, is the exact same weave that I used for this top. Same materials and everything. So you can really see how that translates into a very nicely draping fabric. Um, it's obviously not street legal. Like you'd need to wear something else underneath it. Um, but the stretch is just so lovely. I mean, especially for like belly dancers and um, I wouldn't recommend uh, the stretchy rings for fire spinners because I mean it melts, but if you do like LED or if you make one out of solid metal for fire spinning, um, you can actually come through and use for the flat, for the larger rings, you could use a punched metal ring or like washers or something and then join them together with open rings on like the smaller kind of like crossbars. Um, you could punch rings out of leather and join them together with metal. Um, like if you had like leather circles with four holes punched in them, oops, um, you could join it together this same way, this same kind of concept and technique. You could use gears, like little gear charms, and join them together like that. I mean, just the possibilities here really are only limited by uh, your imagination and your access to tools. Um, so I'd love to hear what some of y'all's ideas of different things that, um, you could make from this or make this with <laughs> even. Um, and yeah, if you guys enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please check us out on Patreon. There's a link down in the video description below and, um, we do all sorts of like giveaways and different things for like the one to five dollar pledging groups and then if you pledge ten dollars or more, you actually get kits and materials or gifts mailed to you every month. And we also do that internationally too. Now for you to get something every month on the international orders, since to some countries it costs a little quite a bit <laughs> to um, ship you might need to do the $20 or more pledging but if you're international and you do the $10 pledge what I do is I'll mail you two months worth of stuff in one package that way we can kind of offset that expense of shipping but for just about everybody else um you get something every month so uh, yeah <laughs> um, also please find us on Facebook if you want to share pictures of stuff that you make or just like kind of hang out uh, yeah, so I think that's everything. Um, I hope y'all have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, you can, like, contact me down below. Uh, happy crafting, y'all. I'll see you guys around. Bye! <laughs>